cover up the scar. Cover up the scar. Oh my god, it's heavy. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're still bitter about Marlena not getting an Oscar nomination for Witness for the Prosecution. I'm gonna raise both. <laughs> the Bible. Do you, do you see all of this? It is what I consider important information or just my favorite parts. Lipstick. Ugh. Problems. I'm wearing my beige jumpsuit today because guess whose favorite color that was? Mm -hmm. Do I get bonus points for also having a beige mug? Yeah, I do. I was recently approached by the Last Goddess blog, and if you do not follow them on Tumblr or like their page on Facebook, I suggest you go and do this now. If you are a fan of old Hollywood, and especially if you are a fan of Marlena Dietrich. For those of you who follow me on Twitter and Tumblr, you know that old Hollywood is a huge part of my life. It's like 95% of my life. And then Marlena Dietrich is basically my number one. She is one of the signatures on my thigh that I got done on May 6th. Um, that video is on my channel if you want to see it. I am just basically making this little vlog for Marlena fans. These are just my opinions and opinions of some of my friends about her. We are not speaking on behalf of the entire old Hollywood fandom or all of Marlena fans. These are just our thoughts, our opinions, um, how we feel. So if you think something else, then comment, let us know. I think for a lot of us, when we first get introduced to Old Hollywood or first become a part of the Old Hollywood community, I think we just, you know, sort of stumble upon her because she did have such a big influence on that time and on that decade, and she still does. She's still a huge influence in the film industry, in the fashion industry. Her legacy is living on because of designers, directors, actors, musicians who still see her as a big influence, and she is. I was about third. 13 or 14 when I first um, discovered who she was, I guess. I have a lot of the uh, Turner Cross the Classic Movies uh, books, um, and I got this one when I was about 14. I have the whole set. This one is Leading Ladies, and then I also have Leading Men and Leading Couples. And Marlena was in, um, is in this one. right here. I was just so fascinated by her and just the way they talked about her in here and her films just sounded so interesting to me and plus I've always um, loved Germany and been interested in Germany. My friend Melissa she told me that she can't specifically remember how she sort of fell in to Marlena but um, she was, she was 20 and it was on her birthday. And my friend Katie became interested in Marlena because of yours truly. And she's always been interested in Germany and in powerful women. And I got her um, a woman at war uh, for her birthday. Um, and then we've also nicknamed Katie's Jeep the Kidney Killer, which is the name of the Jeep in a Foreign Affair, which is my personal favorite Marlena film. There are so many old Hollywood blogs, but those that are that are more specifically Marlena are mine, <laughs> which is melinalee03.tumblr.com, uh, um, my friend Melissa's uh, Tumblr, which is I Love Marlena Dietrich 1901, um, Shanghai Lily, which is also called Dietrich Daily, which um, basically just photos of her every day and gifts and or GIF. I still don't know what the proper pronunciation is, but I'm gonna say GIF. Also, my friend Carly, who is in love with Audrey Um but she does blog a lot of Marlena. In the old Hollywood community, you will see a lot of us, when we talk about Marlena, we call her Lena. And I don't know how this started, I don't know who started it, but, um, Maybe it's from so many of us reading Maria's book and Lena was her nickname. I don't know, but a lot of us will call her Lena. I mean, every time I reblog photos on Tumblr, every time 
Melissa reblogs re photos, we always tag it with Lena. And I don't, I don't know why this started. Maybe it's sort of the same thing about how a lot of us call Lauren Bacall Betty. I'm not too sure. Maybe calling her Lena just makes us feel like fan-wise we're more connected since we all have like the same nickname for someone who we really truly admire I don't know <laughs> but we we just we call her Lena as far as Marlena's career goes I think the part that interests a lot of us fans the most is obviously her film career which is what she's most known for aside from I think her her tours of course her personal life is also everywhere and there's so many rumors that and there you know there's so many just things that have been unconfirmed and people just still like to talk shit about her even though you know she's no longer with us um, but there are just so many rumors that just need to be put to rest that are not true at all I think also as fans we feel the need to protect that we feel very protective about these lies that are floating around probably the biggest one being that Marlena Dietrich and Greta Garbo had an affair and this is not true they never even met the closest they ever came to meeting was when Marlena and Jean Gabin were together I believe they were renting the house beside Garbo's and Garbo was very shy and she used to stand like on the garbage cans and like peer over the hedges just to see what they were up to but they never met ever ever never there was never an affair between them I think the reason why most people think that there was an affair between them because they were rivals like the reason why Paramount brought Marlena over from Germany was to be a rival to Garbo because Garbo, Garbo was MGM's European import and so then Paramount wanted their own European import to compete but they never met. Their only connection is Tulula Bankhead because Tulula knew both of them. They are also, you know, linked together through uh, John Gilbert. Um, but other than that, they never met. They just knew some of the same people. So no, they did not have an affair. And when people try to tell us that they did, it drives us crazy because they never they never did. They didn't. No. <laughs> so speaking about her personal personal life, a lot of us are interested as to what she was like behind closed doors and when she wasn't being attacked by the paparazzi and when she didn't have to do her job as a movie star. One thinks that she was just this like diva who all she cared about was, you know, false eyelashes and gowns and this and that and how much money she was going to make. But to, no, she was not. And I would, a lot of us really like, like to know who Dietrich was. She was like when she wasn't acting like, you know, a movie star. When she was just like at home in jeans, like cooking for her family. Like we want to know that side of her. We don't want to know the side of her that was, that was, you know, on stage giving these amazing performances in these gowns and, you know, the actress who was in front of the camera and like, ah, uh, like that. We want to know who she really was. We want to know Marlena Dietrich the person, not Marlena Dietrich the movie star. And her family has been kind enough to, um, make two documentaries about it. Of course, um, her own song, which came out in 2001, and then Twilight of an Angel, which is from 2012. And I suggest you all watch both of those. Mm -hmm. As far as the Marlena fandom goes, I don't think, I mean, I've been a part of this fandom for a few years, and I don't think that it's really changed. I feel like every time someone new joins, they're amazing and so much fun and it's an it's so nice to meet someone who has the same interests and love and respect for someone that you do uh, for the most part the fans that i have met are around my age i'm 23 some um a little bit younger like some teenagers and then some quite older as well because you know obviously she was around in a time period that was you know quite a while ago there's no hate there's no judging we never bash someone because of their opinions like oh 
I didn't really like this film, but I really like this film. Like, if I don't agree with you, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, but I am going to tell you that you are wrong if you tell me that her and Garba had an affair, because get out of here. I blog a lot of Maria on my Tumblr. Maria Riva has just been a big influence in my life, and the first time um, I saw her was actually in The Scarlet Empress, which is also my first Merlina film. So it kind of worked out nicely. I have learned to love Maria for being more than just the daughter of, and that is unfortunately a title that she has carried her entire life, and I think it's about time that I can just start referring to her as Maria Riva without people looking at me and going, oh, you, you mean Dietrich's daughter, right? Like, that's who you're talking about? Because it's just so frustrating because so many people think that all she's like known for is writing the book about her mother but for me i love her television career even though she laughs and says well i don't really consider it a career <laughs> watch her METV legends interview um it's three parts it's about two and a half hours um but i've watched it so many times it's actually ridiculous i also run the uh, Facebook page, the fan Facebook page, and it's facebook.com slash Maria Haididi. Um, Haididi was uh, the nickname that she gave herself as a child, um, and she only wanted to be called that. She, she has said that, you know, some kids have, you know, imaginary friends or those like mystical figures. She's like, well, I'm mystical figured myself, so I called myself Haididi, um, which is just the cutest thing. And then when she got older, she went back to being known as Maria. Why did I just do quotations? <laughs> and But her nickname was Kata, which um, in German means Tomcat. And I think that is just the cutest thing. Maria is someone who I think is so underrated. And I absolutely hate some of the Christina Crawford comparisons that she gets. Fuck you! <laughs> Sorry. Ooh. She has even said herself when she wrote the book that everyone was waiting for Mummy Dearest. Everyone was waiting for her to say, oh, she did this and she did this and she did that. But she, Maria was just so professional about it and she clearly has respect for her mother as an actress and as a singer and as a performer. Um, and I love how honest and how candid she was and how she didn't sugarcoat anything and she was like you want to know what life was like with Dietrich this is what it was like and I don't think that it was hurtful in any way because we we haven't been there we don't know what it's like so I hate it when people compare her book to mommy dearest and I hate it when people say that oh she was this and she was that and it's just all negative things and that really 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 makes me upset because I just I feel like I I know her on a different like I know I know her on like a different level obviously I don't actually know her but I have just done more research than most I guess I also have her signature tattooed on my thigh. She's just, I have so much admiration and respect and love for her. And I am not about to start crying. <sighs> just she has, you, you know, she's been through hell and back. And I just wish that the whole daughter of thing, again, she's been carrying it around her entire life, so. If we could just start referring to her as Maria Riva, that would be great. She does have two Emmy nominations. I have the same, uh, you know, love and respect for her kids. Not only because they are her kids, but because I respect them individually for the work that they have done. Sunday was the anniversary of Michael Riva's death, um, which I tweeted about. He was an absolute genius. And I don't think that production designers get um, enough credit because without them, let's be honest, films would look like shit. He is responsible for The Goonies, Scrooge, The Color Purple, Iron Man. His last film was Django Unchained. I suggest you all watch his um, interviews at Comic-Con from, I believe it was 2009. I'm gonna look that up right now. Oh, it's 2008. 
It's from 2008. So um, he did a panel um, at Comic-Con with other production designers, and then he did his own little interview as well, and they're all on YouTube. Peter Riva is, listen, I know you're not supposed to have favorites, but he is my favorite Riva child. <laughs> I don't know why, maybe it's because I'm also a writer, um, I don't know, but uh, I suggest you all read A Tribal Rumble, Rumble and Murder on Safari. I read Murder on Safari in two days, like two and a half days, and <laughs> It would be like midnight and I'd be like, okay, just like one more chapter and then I'll go to bed. And like, yeah, it's like 2 a.m. And I, when I look over at the clock next, and I'm like, oh my God. I'm like obsessed with that book now. And on Twitter, my like location status says Rudolph's Croft Farm, which is um, somewhere they go in the book. And I can't wait for more books to come. Um, and Heap and Mary, they better get married. If you have read Murder on Safari, then you know what I'm talking about. But they better, because they are meant to be. Of course, Maria's husband, William Reva, was a scenic designer and an inventor, and he is responsible for, you know, in car commercials, how they have the car on like a shiny floor so that it like reflects. That was him. <laughs> In one of Michael's interviews, he talks about how his dad really influenced his decision to become a production designer, and it's the sweetest, sweetest story. I actually, <laughs> this isn't going to sound too weird, um, I bought their wedding photo from Historic Images, and it actually has the original newspaper caption, and it's hanging on my wall. <laughs> if that isn't strange. Um, <laughs> I think I've covered everything um, that was sent to me. Again, thank you to Last Goddess for thinking of me and asking me to do this. It means a lot. Mwah.